What's going on guys, Wolfie here, welcome back to the channel. Now today I want to go over some tips and tricks that will hopefully help you guys win more games in Fortnite Season 2. Now this is aimed mainly at zero build players like myself. I don't play build, I used to play build, I don't like it anymore. So these are tips and tricks for zero build Season 2 of Fortnite. Now I've put a lot of time into the game. But before we continue, I will say this, I'm not a pro player by any means and I'm not one of your crazy Twitch streamers that gets 100 wins per day, but I have a ton of Battle Royale experience starting all the way back in 2016 with H1Z1. If you guys know H1Z1 on any of you played it, you are a true Battle Royale OG. Anyway, let me not waste too much time, let's get into Fortnite Season 2 Zero Build Tips. Now starting off, we're gonna go over weapons and loadouts, I will keep this very simple. My playstyle is aggressive, I played plenty of BRs and this has always been my style. I like to move and attack other players quickly and weapon choices matter. If you've seen my videos before, you will know I love to run the three weapon loadout, so three guns, one movement item, one healing item. That's normally a shotgun, an AR, a sniper accompanied with wings or shockwaves. I will usually carry shields. If I don't find any shields, I will at least have a med kit. The shields I recommend you guys carry is the minis or the chug splashes as they are the quickest to use when in the middle of a fight. Now, I am a type of player that likes to carry a sniper, but if that's not your thing, you can run two weapon loadout, have a shotty and an AR alongside two movement items or two healing items but today I will focus on the three gun loadout when it comes to guns let's go over shotguns as this is usually my first slot if you want to win matches of Fortnite you are gonna get into shotgun fights up close and shotgun is the best choice when it comes to fighting up close right now I will begin by saying the pump this season is the worst gun no matter if it's gold or common it just shoots too slow by the time you take two shots with your pump the auto shotgun on the gatekeeper will absolutely melt you. When it comes to what shotgun you should use this season if you're used to your auto shotgun and you don't want to transfer over to the gatekeeper by all means use the auto shotgun it's still a viable option. I usually run both depending which one I find first. I do prefer the gatekeeper personally as I feel like it outputs a little bit more damage when you're accurate while the auto shotgun you can just spam and hope for the best. On both guns I will recommend running the same attachments so I run no sights, I like to keep it clean when I aim in, I want to see as much as I can around my screen. I don't like to be locked into a red dot when I'm really up close in people's face. Secondary is the extended mag. You have to have an extended mag on either of these shotguns. The gatekeeper I think is a must to have an extended mag. You go from 3 shots to 5 shots and the gatekeeper has the capability of already killing someone in 3 shots if you land one headshot. So extended mag as a second choice. Third choice the hip fire laser. You want to be as accurate when hip firing and moving around making yourself hard to be hit by other players. So a hip fire laser on both is a must. The extended mag on both is a must and then the sight and the muzzle is absolutely up to you. If you want to put a suppressor or the recoil attachment, it doesn't make a difference to the gun. Extended mag and laser do make a massive difference. Now for the secondary slot, there's two weapons that can go here for me. Now keep in mind this is my perfect class setup, meaning this is what I aim to find throughout the game to guarantee me a win. Now in Season 2 they introduced the Warforged AR which is at the moment my favorite secondary to use. Mid to long range fights are easy once modded. Again, I will keep saying this, the Warforce AI with no sight attachments and no recoil control absolutely sucks. This gun kicks all over the place, there's way too much bloom and the gun feels way too inaccurate. But once modded, and these are the attachments I will prefer you guys to use, red dot, extended mag, recoil control grip and a suppressor. Once you have those attachments on, then this weapon slaps. If you can control the recoil, which is a lot less with the grip attachment, you will be melting people mid to long ranges you'll be melting people if you can't control the recoil you can easily tap fire this weapon on mouse or on controller tap fire reposition your aim tap fire a bit more you will be dropping people like there's no tomorrow now the second contender for a gun that i like to use in this slot would go to the tommy gun this drum mug beast is incredible at close to mid range yes you're not going to challenge people at long ranges like you can with the warforce ar but this shotgun combined with the gatekeeper is an unbelievable combo that has won me multiple games. You can also get a golden variant of this uh, Tommy gun from the from Midas on the boat. It costs 600 gold. 
Only one player can buy it if you're playing squads, but it's a golden mythic variant of the Tommy gun. With this one, you're going to be ripping through people. You just hold the shoot button and hope for the best. You don't really need to aim too much. The gun just keeps shooting and destroying stuff in front of you. The attachments I will recommend are a little bit different on this gun. Do not put a suppressor on it because the suppressor makes the gun kick a lot. The only difference with these attachments is that I will use a red dot. Again, sight, you can use whichever sight you wish. Definitely the extended ram mag. I will use a recoil control grip and a recoil control muzzle because like I said the suppressor makes the gun kick a lot and the recoil on this goes from left to right so having more recoil control on a weapon that doesn't kick up that kicks side to side makes a lot of sense. For the second slot the Warforce AR or the Tommy gun two weapons that will help you dominate this season. Now the third slot will be the sniper as everyone expected. If you're good with this, this is an instant headshot knock. If used correctly and with the right amount of aggression, you can start all of your team fights with one enemy player knocked out. That makes it 3v4 straight away. Now imagine you have two or three good players that can snipe on your team. That's an instant 2v4 or 1v4 before the fight even has officially kicked off. If you're not carrying the snipers yet, I am telling you now, this is a must carry weapon. If you're not sniping, make sure someone in your team is sniping because the instant knock capability is a must have. There is a heavy bullet drop, so you do need to learn how the sniper bullets travel. Yes, you will miss a ton of shots, but trust me, this weapon can give you a instant advantage in a fight once you hit a headshot. Now the attachments I will recommend for the sniper is a four time scope. I used to use the ACOG in season two it's now been removed some people use the holographic sight instead i stick with the four times i will use the fast ads speed grip i will use extended mag and for the last attachment is absolutely up to you the suppressor or the weaker control attachment don't really make a difference i usually leave whatever is on there so for the sniper fast ads most important extended mag so you can get your shots off quicker this basically sums up the weapon side of things now let's go over your fourth slot which i recommend you use this slot for movement when it comes to this there are only two options in my opinion i will give you the honorable mention as well but it's either the wings or the shockwaves for movement i still prefer to use the wings i will say never deploy them in a fight or to push people as you will end up dying Use the wings for clever movement, quick rotations. Use the wings to approach fights. Never fly straight into a fight with your wings because that is an instant death. Because you can get shot out of the sky so easily as the hitbox for the wings is a lot bigger than your own. So people end up hitting you. I'm, I presume you noticed yourself shooting people that are flying in the sky is a lot easier as the hitbox is huge. Now, if you're not using the wings, shockwaves is always a great choice as they launch you at such a quick speed that your enemies will usually give up on chasing you unless they got wings. Quick mention will go to the port fort. This is the honorable mention. It can be extremely helpful in end game. If you're running squads or you can't find any movement items, I would say carry the port fort. These things have won me games before and they will win you games too. Anyway, this slot I am leaving up to you. It's your choice which one you want to go for. I've explained you, the wings are good for quick rotations and for zone control, they're not very good for pushing and getting into fights, while the shockwaves are extremely good at pushing and getting into fights and then quickly getting out of fights. So that one there is up to you, I use both, I do prefer the wings as it stands. Now the fifth slot, this is a very simple one, gonna go over it very quickly. You either use the chug splashes or the mini shields. Now I only carry white health if I cannot find any shields. But trust me, the last slot, have something you can heal with quickly. For example, minis, 25 health, takes 2-3 seconds to use. Chug splashes, you dash them on the floor, 20 health at a time. Guys, you need to have something that you can use mid-fight to heal yourself. Don't carry big pots or fizz splashes, something that will take forever to give you a bit of health back. Trust me, having a mini or popping a chug splash mid fight will win you a lot of fights. All right, next we're gonna move over to medallions and mythic weapons. Now I'm going to go straight to the point. If you want an advantage in your game, there are two medallions you will want to carry. It doesn't matter if you're playing squads or if you're playing solo, the Zeus and the Cerberus medallion are the ones to have. The other medallions are okay, but Zeus and Cerberus, if you want to see a difference in your matches, you will want to go for at least one of these. Now let me tell you why. The Cerberus medallion gives you three dashes, which you can use at any time as long as you got one, or one, two or three of them green skulls that float around your character. These skulls indicate how many dashes you have remaining. With the medallion, anywhere around the map, your dashes will 
keep on replenishing and you'll be able to dash around and change how your fights go. This makes a huge difference as being able to dash left, right or up can throw your opponents off and give you an easy kill. Now next medallion that makes sense to hold is the Zeus one. This grants your ability to run quicker and jump higher which means your movement is basically godly. Honestly this medallion is super good as you can sprint away from people, change angles of fights really quickly and the extra jump height does let you move around tougher terrain a, li a little bit easier. Now if I am going to reveal myself to the whole lobby it will only be for one of these two medallions. I don't need to say much more like I said straight to the point. Now for the mythic weapons that the gods drop I will say the good early game but I wouldn't carry any of them into the end game. The Ares Warforged AR has some questionable attachments, it comes with a speed grip, there's no dram mag so I wouldn't use it as it kicks too much. Cerberus Mythic Shotgun has only 3 bullets and it comes with like a red dot or something which is not the greatest but again early game is really good. Hades has the Harbinger SMG which again some questionable attachments on it, use it early game but I wouldn't carry it into the end. And then lastly Zeus's Mythic DMR, I'm not even going to comment on that one, I don't think it's useful at all, I would never pick it up. And I wouldn't recommend for any of you guys to carry it. Now moving on to drop locations, like I said before, I'm an aggressive player, I prefer to drop hot, get a kill or two off the start to get the confidence going, but honestly this season you don't have to drop at any boss locations, you don't get the mod benches straight away so there is no need, I've been landing at a lot of different POIs, my favourite so far this season has to be the Grim Gate, reason being you get a good medallion, you get a gold gatekeeper shotgun which is good for early game, there's a bunker which is only 300 meters away so once the bunker is open you can get your guns modded and also there's a lot of people always landing at Grim Gate due to the fact that there is a medallion, there is a possibility of a gold shotgun so early game is always fun if you end up surviving you're already starting with five six kills and then you can move on to underworld which is just up the hill not too far another medallion a useless medallion but another place where you can get some good loot and possibly challenge another team straight away but like i said i don't think there's a specific poi that is better than the other land where you like to land like I said, my preferred location is Grimgate, but I do go to Classy, I do go to Reckless, and I will visit Underworld. Anyway, the next bit of the video is probably the most important. Now, once you reach that 20 player remaining mark, I would say this is where you consider yourself to be inside the end game. Now, once you reach the stage, this is where you need to think a little bit more about your positioning and you gotta pick your fight. You gotta fight what you think is worth fighting and avoid certain fights if they're not worth taking. I do recommend for this part of the match you should have the zone cards scanned already. This will allow you to see the next zones. If you don't, sometimes I go for it in my matches, sometimes I don't. It's not very crucial. Once you have the experience of how the circle works and where to position yourself within that circle, you don't really need this card scanned every single match. It does help of course knowing where you need to go next. But trust me, if you got the knowledge, and I'm going to show you a couple of examples of good positioning inside the zone, you will know how to survive. So in this example, the zone is about to start pushing us. We got teams around us, and we know one team is still on the island. This means they can easily fly over us and get a better location inside the new zone. Now this is something that is key. Always remember where you have seen your opponents, as this will give you crucial information on how to move into the next zone. Here as you can see we know restored reels is where the zone is moving to. As we approach the first thing we do is scan the area to see what high ground can be claimed. High ground will usually win you 1v1 matches as shooting below you is much easier than shooting upwards. As we moved we decided to claim a rooftop with a porter 4 on the go as we decided this was the best option. As you can see by the zone we ended up being in a side with cover and high ground. We could have pushed to this hill over here which would have been an even better position but we would compromise on cover as there's nothing to hide behind. Like I said end game is all about understanding standing the map and scanning your surroundings. Always pick the best location to go to. High ground is key. I know some people will tell you you can win from low ground, which yes, in certain situations you can, but in games like Fortnite, trust me, high ground is where you want to be. Now in the next example, I want to quickly show you how knowing where your opponents are can be very useful to your game, and especially if you want to control a zone. So here, as you can see, my squad is already in the zone. We're holding a good position. 
but we know there's a team that's going to have to fly in from the island. So instead of waiting for them deep inside the zone, we pushed right up to the edge and forced a fight that the other team did not want to take, allowing us to grab some free kills and also we know now that this side of the zone belongs to just us. Now finally, let's say you've made it into the last zone, you avoided some fights and you're here. In the final zone, there's 10 players remaining. You have to use the information that the game has provided to you to think about your next step. So if you open the map, on the left side you can see how many teams are remaining. Use this to your advantage. If you hear people fighting and you see that there's three teams left, what do you do? You go and fight. You go and try to third party and get your win. Now imagine it's the same scenario. You hear people fighting, but now there's four teams remaining. This changes the entire situation. Do you push? Do you wait? This is where you gotta be smart. Use your wings to scout the area. Maybe send a teammate that's got shockwaves to go on a trip and then come back very quickly if they get shot to figure out where people are hiding. But you do have to be clever yourself and make the right decisions when needed. My tips can only go so far to help you in winning. At the end of the day, you can do everything I said and still not win. It all depends on you. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching today's video. Drop me a comment if you have learned something new. Drop a like if you want to see more videos like this, straight to the point, no BS style of video. Covering what works for me, hoping you guys can replicate it in your games. Drop a sub if you're new to the channel and I'll catch you guys in the next one.